All right, what is up guys, it's Arnek and welcome back. This week I wanted to show you a fairly new effect that was just recently released. That effect is Thick Stroke. Thick Stroke is a free effect for After Effects, created by Plugin Everything. I will drink... I will drink? No. I will drop a link in the description below for you to check it out. And you definitely should, because, I mean, it's free, why wouldn't you? What Thickstroke essentially is doing is giving you a really easy to use tool to create your own tapered strokes and customize them however you want. So let's dive into After Effects and take a look at how this effect works. Roll the intro! Basically all you need is any kind of layer. So let's create a new solid layer with controller command plus Y and call it Thickstroke. Then let's add the effect. Search for thick stroke and apply it to the layer. And ta-da, nothing is happening. That is because if we go into the effect settings, we can see that it is expecting a mask input. So let's create a mask, align it to the center of our composition, choose that mask in the effect settings, and now you got it. And we can start customizing it. First things first, let's start with, with control. You can either work on the start and end width, which is probably the way to go for 90% of the time. At least it is for me. Here you can adjust the width start and end, as well as the width multiplier. All of these are influencing the thickness of the stroke in one way or the other, which with the name given should not really surprise you. The other option here is using the vertex feather. If you are not familiar with this tool, here's how it works. Underneath the pen tool, all the way on the bottom slot, there is this feather icon. With this, you can alter the path expansion at any point and also have multiple instances to create more abstract shapes. But as I said, in most cases, you will probably go with the start and end mode. So let's reset all of it. Next up is the style section. Here you can choose between a round and a butt cap, as well as setting the width interpolation, which, you guessed it, makes your stroke width fall off either smooth or a little grittier, which you can see better if I make the stroke a little bigger. But I mainly keep this at smooth as I just like the overall style more. And then we have the color section. You can choose between several color modes and each step down gives you one more adjustable color. So you can have a solid color, a gradient with two, three or four colors. Then you can also swap the colors and reverse the drawing order, which simply puts the lower color on top of the other. One step further down, we get to the trim pass section. This is pretty much the same thing as you would expect with a normal trim pass, but there is one exception. Underneath offset, you also have a drop down for influences. You can either make trim paths influence only width, only color, width and color or none of them. So for this one let's choose width and color, adjust the end percentage and animate the offset to get a perfect loop. For the quality tab I feel like it's best to just leave it as is. And already you're pretty much done with this short loader like animation. If you feel like it you can add a little more interest, add a glow effect or track some particles into the scene, but that is part of another tutorial. Yeah, I just noticed I completely forgot about my lights in the background. This is take two. What did you think about this new tool? Any questions? Drop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to smash the like button, subscribe if you aren't already and also ring that bell to be notified about future videos. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!